putting my collar up today. We're going full Cantona. They're at it again. Yeah, this is Chuaman this week at Man United, your essential roundup of all things Manchester United that's happening on social media. So you can imagine how annoyed I was last week when I missed the biggest Twitter story ever. So we recorded last week's Chuaman. I went home, I'm sat there on the settee waiting for Nick to finish his edit, waiting for it to be uploaded. And then all of a sudden I see the biggest story in Twitter history happened. Fuck! And it was too late. We couldn't get it in last week's Twaman. And no doubt you've all already seen it now. But Rooney, Vardy, the biggest drama ever. We're not even talking about Jamie and Wayne here. This was Colleen and Rebecca. Yes, the wags were going wild. I know you already probably know what happened at this point. But basically, Colleen Rooney was putting fake stories on her Instagram story. Just so Rebecca Vardy would take those stories and sell them to the sun. Then Colleen blocked everyone on her Instagram apart from Rebecca so it was obvious that it was Rebecca was the one that was actually selling the stories ah it was good though I, it was great and I, <laughs> you've got to love watching it and yeah the, 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 the drama what was it that I was gonna fucking say then yeah that was it don't put that bit in I actually don't I love it though I love the drama and I'm gonna be honest in 2007, when I went to go and see Colleen Rooney open the new Asda Living on Altrincham Retail Park, I didn't think we'd be here. But like Rebecca Vardy, proper pretender, like a pretender to the wag crowd. She ain't the real wag. These aren't real wags, are they, these lot? Like, you remember the OG wags, like Colleen Rooney, Victoria Beckham, and Cheryl, you know, them guys. The guys that were in Germany. The ones that were having all the stories written about them then, they're the proper wags. That was like the peak of wagdom. Nowadays, just a bunch of chavs who got lucky, innit? Also, loads of drama going on in London. Uh, if you're from down south, you've probably been affected by this in some way. The Extinction Rebellion protests. Um, whichever side of the fence you sit on what these guys are doing. Uh, it was interesting what they did with the London Tube, wasn't it? Did you see this? Yeah, so um, they basically would delayed all the tubes by jumping on top of it. Um, some people don't like them doing this, think it's not good, this sort of vandalism and affecting people's day like this. I, however, think it's great, I think it's brilliant, and I think they should do it on Sunday on the Manchester Metrolink, and then hopefully the game against Liverpool will get called off. <laughs> Please call the game off. We're not ready for it right now. Pogba and David De Gea are injured. We're in a pretty difficult position. Like form says we should get spanked 8 0, but it's United Liverpool. Anything can happen. And uh, I was in Wales last weekend as well. Went to watch the um, Wales versus Croatia game just to support Dan James, to support the manager, Ryan Giggs. Hello, Gaz Drinkwater here outside the Cardiff City Stadium. I'm here to chat to Wales fans today. I've got some would you rather questions for them. So let's see how they do. Uh, <laughs> Fuck! Yeah, just to support Dan James and, of course, the manager. Giggsy, of course, at that Wales game. Um, I tell you what, you can tell Giggs was working under Van Gaal for a long period of time. Lots of sideways, boring football. There was one part of the game, though, which has received quite a lot of attention, understandably from Man United fans. We were all a little bit worried about this. Dan James got knocked out. Dan James. What did you make of Concussion Gate? Which seemed to infuriate Twitter. If he's, because everyone thought Ryan he Giggs out said he was then, an act acting. Yeah. Daniel James said he wasn't knocked out. He looked knocked the fuck it, out. It looked dead, didn't he? All I was waiting for of... was Smokey to stand over him and say, you got knocked the fuck yeah. out. I love that film. You see it? Absolutely sparko. Look at him on the floor, not moving at all. I saw that in the stands. I was, I was worried at the time. I was thinking, hopefully he's fine. Um, and then five, ten minutes later, he's up and playing again. Right? So I'm confused at what's actually happened here because the words play acting have been banded around here. And like, there's either one of two things has happened here. Either Dan James has pretended to be concussed in order to stop the game. Like, look at him here. If that's him pretending to be concussed, that, I, I'm not having it. But if, if that is actually him pretending to be concussed, he needs to get a grip, like seriously. Like, you can't be doing stuff like that. That's such a serious injury. You cannot be faking that. However, I personally don't think that is what's happened. I think he genuinely was concussed. 
And if that's the case... Fuck! Giggsy lad, what are you doing? Take him off! Take him off the pitch! Surely Giggs is aware that this is a Man United player and he should have some sort of allegiance still with us. And either way, even just for the safety of the player, you can't be bringing on concussed players back onto the pitch, even if they say it's alright. Even if the physio says it's alright. Giggsy lad, you should have dragged him off the pitch quicker than you were dragged out. I'm not saying it, I'm not saying it. I also absolutely adore this video that BBC Sport have put up with Juan Mata. This is great. Uh, it's basically just him hanging around in Northern Quarter and all of the different manks that stop and want a picture with him is just incredible. Not just wanting a picture, but just genuinely, absolutely buzzing to see him. Like, look at this guy. <laughs> This Look at the rules there. Yeah. I, I love that. And I think there's a lot of people in Manchester who do respect Juan Mata, yeah. you know, even if some of us don't think he should be playing too many games for Man United anymore. He's a great guy and he's done wonderful things. And it makes me think, you know, I think that that would happen for a lot of Man United players. That I think if they were walking down the street, lots of people would stop them, shake their hand and tell them, you know, how great they think they are and how their kids love them, how so-and-so loves them. Um, and I think it's important for United players to see that because if you're just on social media, you would think that everyone hates you. Like, genuinely, the, the amount of abuse these lads get on social media at the minute is absolutely ridiculous. Marcus Rashford put up a video, a charity video recently. Hi everyone, this Christmas I am partnering with Selfridges in Manchester on my In The Box campaign to support some of Manchester's biggest homeless shelters. Manchester is my home and together I want to make sure we help as many people as possible. I'm hoping lots of you can get involved and to find out more you can visit my website. Come on guys, let's make a difference. The replies are absolutely vile. Rashford put this, I'm Manchester born and bred and this Christmas I want to give something back to this great city. Right? What a lovely thing that is. How can you abuse him for that? Apparently you can. Some people reply in things like, just start scoring on the pitch, that's all we care about. Start with giving us goals and better performance. It's not about you. It's not about you. A goal would be nice, Marcus. More important things. Try being a decent footballer. Like, these lads, like, if they saw these footballers in the street, they'd never say anything like this to them, would they? They wouldn't. They, they wouldn't, would they? They'd be shaking their hand trying to get a selfie, like, ah, he's my best mate. But they can put it on social media because they get brave there, and it's just a bit like grow up you know what I mean these footballers are human they can do what they want and if you want to abuse them then you're just you're just showing that you're a worthless troll really you're just a faceless worthless troll and that probably means that your opinion means very little to these professional footballers to be honest and of course we have to say a massive well done to a fellow who used to play for our club actually you might not have known that little known fact um, Cristiano Ronaldo scored the 700th goal of his career recently. 700 goals is absolutely obscene. And I think that's something that we will not see in a very, very long time in football. I think someone said like he's like 500 goals still though off Pele. Right, nonsense. Because, because half of Pele's goals don't count, like honestly. Uh, Pele was scoring goals in friendly charity matches and they were all going down on his total tally. Pelly would walk down the fucking pavement, he'd flick up a can of coke, he'd volley it into a bin and it would go down on his goals tally. The man's a fraud. <laughs> Pelly's not a fraud. Please don't have a go at me in the comments. In total, 1,281 goals in 1,363 games. Uh, also, if you ever want summing up just how much of an absolute circus the Manchester United transfer policy is, then have a read of this story. Um, so it surrounded Marcus Rojo, and uh, it was something that happened just after we'd signed him, because apparently we'd done all our scouting for him, very thorough, very in depth, but we forgot to check one key detail, whether he was in trouble with the police, um, because Rojo was facing a possibility of a criminal trial, and if convicted, Time in prison, apparently, but United knew nothing about it until, get this, a member of staff typed his name into Google. This was after he had signed. Now, obviously, we know that Rojo settled this out of court and there were no criminal proceedings involved, but how did we not know this? Honestly, 
It's a circus. It is a circus out there. Well, that was this week at Man United, your essential roundup of all things social media related surrounding Manchester United. Now, I'm going to go home now and wait for Nick to upload this. And I guarantee while I'm waiting for that, something absolutely insane happens. Predict it. Well, what is it? What is it that's going to happen now when I go home? Like, Victoria Beckham is going to have an affair with Sven-Goran Eriksson. Who knows? Anything could happen.